Good evening and welcome to SBS World News Australia. I'm Janice Peterson. And I'm Anton Enos. The Burmese democracy leader Aung San Suu Kyi has been sentenced to a further 18 months of house arrest after being found guilty of breaching the terms of her previous sentence. The verdict has been condemned as shameful by human rights campaigners. Malaysia has called for an urgent ASEAN meeting to discuss the verdict, but the sentence could have been a lot worse. She spent most of the last 20 years in detention. Now, Aung San Suu Kyi has been told she must spend another 18 months locked away. A court in Rangoon today sentenced her to three years hard labour for breaching the terms of her previous detention. But that was commuted by the head of Burma's military regime to a year and a half under house arrest. She'd been accused of allowing an American man into her lakeside home. John Yetor, who swam uninvited to the home in May, has been sentenced to seven years hard labour. Throughout this drawn-out case, there'd been little doubt that Su Chi would be found guilty. Many expected the maximum five-year sentence. That it was less than that has been put down to international pressure. China and Russia has been behind the scenes, uh, playing the role as to suggest the Burmese leaders to consider or reconsider think twice before they pass on the uh, whatever sentence it might be. Human rights campaigners say the Burmese military simply wants Suu Kyi out of the way for next year's planned elections. She spent nearly 14 of the last 20 years in detention. Her National League for Democracy won the last elections in 1990, but was never allowed to take power. Today's verdict indicates the generals are not yet ready to risk giving freedom to the woman who symbolises democracy in Burma. Keith Breen, World News Australia. Well, a short time ago, I spoke to the International Herald, Herald Tribune's uh, correspondent, Tim Johnston, in Bangkok. He says Aung San Suu Kyi's lawyers may still appeal, despite the conviction being widely anticipated. Well, she could have faced five years in prison, and so this is in some ways better than many had hoped, but a lot worse than many others. She originally was charged, uh, was sentenced, I'm sorry, to three years hard labor, which of course caused a gasp in the courtroom, which was full of diplomats and journalists. But uh, then one of the ministers came in and said that the regime, out of the goodness of their heart, had decided to commute that three year hard labor sentence to one and a half years in uh, house arrest back in her villa on University Avenue in Rangoon. Now, this will, uh, most importantly, I think, uh, make sure that she is out of circulation before next year's election. And that certainly is what uh, most of the analysts that I've been speaking to believe is the true reason behind both the case and the sentence. She is, despite having spent 14 of the last 19 years under house arrest, still the most formidable opponent of the Burmese hunter, and I think this shows that they're still very frightened of her. So, Tim, if the generals are sending a signal about uh, next year's election, how are Aung San Suu Kyi's supporters likely to react? Well, there obviously there's a great deal of nervousness uh, in Rangoon. There were 2,000 security guards surrounding Insane Prison, where the court was sitting this morning. Um, I think they are worried that the supporters will rally, but I think probably the They've done so much damage to the opposition, it's going to be very difficult for them to get some sort of critical mass. Now, the opposition overseas, I think, is a different matter. Uh, they are already mobilizing. They're extremely angry. They are putting up a petition to uh, the UN working groups on arbitrary detention. Uh, they are petitioning their governments, particularly strong Burmese lobby, of course, uh, in Britain, very strong in Australia also, uh, in America. They are all mobilizing to try and get their governments to do something about this. But as we've seen, there is a very limited amount of pressure that the governments can put on the Burmese authorities. They put on as much pressure as they could before this verdict, had very little effect. So it's difficult to know exactly what they can do. Okay, Tim Johnson, thank you. Thank you.